bow. Hey, this is Mike Taylor, aka Battleship Cobra, here with another tips and tricks video. If you like my videos, please subscribe and actually turn on the post notifications. There's a little bell down there. If you don't necessarily use YouTube all the time, it'll notify you by email when I post another video. I'm doing lots of tips and tricks and lots of other videos about SAP Business One, and you don't want to miss them. To support me, Basically, just subscribing, liking the video, turn on post notifications. That's the best way to uh, support me. But if you want to support me, look at uh, supportme.battleshipcobra.com. There's a couple options there, and that's awesome. So, <clears throat> what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about a common problem that I get. And, oh, eatwild, eatwild.ca. If you're in BC, Canada, go to eatwild.ca. If you ever wanted to do hunting, get into hunting, uh, it's a great community and check them out so you do your balance sheet you're doing your year-end closing and uh, lo and behold your balance sheet doesn't match your inventory audit report well I hear this all the time and I'm gonna give you my methodology for how to identify problems and how to fix this in your system so let's do this thing Okay, so you see my screen. I use a, an inventory audit tracking, something like this, but first let's identify the issue. Balance sheet, we're going to run it as of 12 31 2016. Okay, so I just have the one inventory account here, and then I want to do inventory audit report. Make sure you have display OB for items with no transactions. I've selected this inventory account already. I'm going to run it for that, for that period there. By items is fine. I, I've already selected the one GL account. Um, I recommend doing this account by account if you have multiples. Hopefully some of them will match. Hopefully they don't all not match, but we're going to see here. Uh, four two ninety seven forty three ninety. So we're off. We're off by quite a bit. So this, you know, people come and they say to me, "Oh, my, the system's broken. Uh, is this something's not happening?" And the philosophy behind it is the inventory accounts are not control accounts like the accounts receivable and accounts payable accounts are. You can mess them up. You can. Uh, do incorrect transactions to them and the two biggest things that are going to cause these issues are journal entries manually to these accounts so you'll notice in the newer versions I'm on 9.2 PL6 currently but you look here to inventory and finished goods you can see you can block manual posting what's the purpose of this the purpose of this is to prevent people from doing journal entries to the linked inventory accounts if you have to do adjustments, you have to do wholesale write-offs, you have to do revaluations, re everything can be done through the inventory module. You can do revaluations, re you can do goods issues to write down stock, you can do all sorts of different things in here. And all of these work properly with the inventory audit report. So the inventory audit report is correct in that it is exactly what the system expects to see in the balance sheet. The balance sheet, however, can be different because of a couple different things. So the first thing that I usually look for is journal entries that are done manually and the second thing is typically a GL account determination uh, issue. So what I use is a little spreadsheet, something like this. It's, this is not very complicated. I just do January to December, assuming that your financial year adjusts this if your financial year is different than the calendar year. And then I just do balance sheet inventory auto report and then the delta. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go through and I'm just going to do this for each month and see how uh, it matches. And then we'll go back and we'll uh, look at my methodology for fixing it. So let's go ahead here. So I'm going to run this for zero. So I'm just going to speed up time. Okay, so here we are. We are done with our 
data entry stuff, we have a spreadsheet here. We can see that it is all good until September. Ooh, sometime in September we screwed up and sometime in October we also screwed up and uh, then it adjusted somewhere between October 1st and November 1st. We have another issue here. So honestly the easy the, the, there's two different ways to kind of approach this so what I'll usually do I'm just gonna do this what I'll usually do is I'll just pop open chart of accounts and I'll check in the inventory finished goods I'll go to this GL view and I'm gonna go yeah somewhere so it's between uh, yeah so somewhere between here and here oh what do we have here okay so we have identified a journal entry a journal entry is always bad unless it's for fixing up your uh, system so we've identified one thing here so we've seen journal entry <clears throat> 1923 so honestly I just set this up guys I just screwed this up on purpose messing up the inventory accounts just to identify it so the first thing you want to look for is that so we have uh, so to explain this we can go journal entry here okay so we're gonna fix that um, honestly there's a couple different ways to approach this you can individually adjust them you can simply just cancel this which I might do and um, that's one way to do it if you have much more complex issues the other way of approaching it is to go and do a journal entry on December 31st and you want to do that to realign the balance sheet and uh, what's in the inventory audit report that's a perfectly fine fix in my opinion if there are too many things moving around if you don't know exactly what's wrong but the problem is you're gonna probably want to audit those two you know, you're gonna want to check that account every month to make sure you can identify them very quickly so if it's if it's if you've identified it and it's only a journal entry it's fine if there's a couple of journal entries you can fix it all at the end of the year and um, write it off to a inventory variance account or wherever the adjustments were supposed to go or just reverse it and do the revaluations or whatever properly and um, that's probably the smartest way to go so I'm gonna I'm gonna just do this cancel so you want to make sure that it cancels it on the same day perfect Okay, so we fixed that one. That was fairly simple. Now we're going to go. So we're going to rerun this at. Let's rerun this at. No, no, I need to rerun it. Okay, so we're back in alignment. <clears throat> so what we're going to do then is we're going to say that these are good and let's check in October again 4319 <clears throat> so the balance sheet says 4319175.03 and this one matches okay good so we know that sometime after October 1st we have an issue. So let's run this for November 1st. Four, two, eight, five. Oh, wrong one. Four, two, eight, five, one, two, nine, one, three. That was probably the same. Four, two, eight, five, seven, two, nine, by one, three. Okay, six hundred. So I'm going to just check and see um, what we have here. With so 297, 48390. So that one's going to stay the same. 4298083.90. Okay, so somewhere between October 1st and November 1st. So now what we can do is work our way back. 
so let's go to 1101-2016 and we're going to just pick a date to go back. So let's go back to October 25th. So let's just pick a date. Usually I'll kind of work my way back by weeks. So let's see, 245, okay, so it's, we know now that it's, this transaction is ahead of that date, okay? So usually I'll expand, you can add like, you know, add a row and you can say 10, 25, 2016, something like that. And then you can keep recording these and um, keep track of things. So we're going to go 10, 26, 10, 26. And we're going to just keep doing this until we find um, the exact date. 428 to 96. So again, this is kind of best case scenario. Obviously, I've prepared this, this particular scenario. Oh, what did we find here? 4, 285, 729, 13 minus 4, 285, 1, 2, 9, 1, 3, 600. Okay. So we know it was on October 27th. Okay. So what are we going to do? Let's go look in the chart of accounts. We're sniffing around for information here. Okay. So we got. October. Okay, a credit. Ma oh, 600. Okay. So there's likely the one. Pop open this credit note here. Look at the journal entry. So this is curious. Why is it putting 230? Okay, 233 looks correct because 233 should be the balance of uh, what it's returning into inventory at the value of the inventory. But then what do we have here? 600. Okay, so you see that this is a revenue account and it shouldn't be an inventory account. Okay, so I've seen this exact scenario many times before. So the second most common issue here is that you have a GL account determination issue. Pop open the item. Look at the item group. In this case, I, I already know this is um, setting GL accounts by item group. If it wasn't your item group, you check your warehouse. We see here sales credit account. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sales credit account needs to be the revenue account opposite, not the inventory account. This is where the revenue is going to be reversed, not the inventory. So you want to double check that you have the correct uh, settings in all of your GL accounts. So take a closer look. So the inventory needs to be in the sales return account. So that's where it's going to put the inventory back. So those need to match. But the person that set this up, in my case, I just kind of messed everything up just for the case of this video, but you know what I'm saying? Sales credit account, you see here, needs to be there. And you can kind of check your other one. So it looks consistent. Good. Okay, so you could see this a whole bunch of times with this particular item, or maybe you see it in a couple of different dates. So use this methodology to kind of whittle it down to explain those different uh, dates, and then you can look through for value combinations. I've used Solver. There's a method in Excel where you can use combinations of transactions in order to find a very specific balance, but it's... It may or may not work and does it really matter in that case when it's too complicated to solve individually just just evaluate for December 31st realign them you know it's gonna be okay for accounting purposes right because it's gonna align to what your balance sheet is you just have to figure out where you're gonna put the uh, the balance of that but uh, if you can find things like I'm looking through there these are the two most common things journal entries etc
Okay, so what do we need to do here? We are 600 understated, so let's look at this. So debit, so this, sh we're gonna need to credit. We're gonna need to credit the inventory for 600. Yeah. So we're going to go financials, journal entry, and this is the same basic transaction you'd do at, at December 31st too. So we're going to go, bet you didn't know October 27th is my birthday. It is. Okay, we're going to go inventory of finished goods and we're going to do the, what is the offset account, sales revenue domestic. Okay, so that's easy enough. Okay, so the incorrect one debited the $600 for inventory, so we're going to credit it for 600 Do that there, make sure the date's there, good, da, 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 all good, so add that. So now we should be able to go back and check this at 1231 2016. 1231 2016. Let's run that. Is it going to match? Drum roll. Oh, 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 Okay, so we've realigned everything. Everything looks good. Again, if you can't figure out specifically what it is, and there's, or maybe there's just too many little transactions, but you fix the issue, maybe you had a whole bunch of little returns and you don't want to go individually and fix them all, um, what you can do is just figure out what the difference is. You need to adjust the balance sheet side to the inventory audit side, not the other way around. So you need to figure out if you're overstated or understated on the balance sheet, and then you do the same journal entry. You go and you take your finished goods, and then you have to offset this somewhere. So this would, you know, gain, loss, inventory variance, price variance, inventory variance, and assuming it's not too material, you need to do that. If you have to figure out what specific things are happening, then that might be a case where you need to go back and do a little bit of investigation, and then maybe you add up what needs to be put into specific accounts, right? You need to kind of do your due diligence there, but that's more of a you thing, less of a me thing. Whoa. All right, so that ends it that so that ends it for today's tips and tricks um, if you follow that process you will easily be able to realign your inventory audit report with your balance sheet I hope this helped you please like subscribe turn on the post notifications and go to support me battleship Cobra if you can thank you all my sapiens have a great day see you in the next video boom